Well, of course, you can replace it and you can do something totally different. Um, and, 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 and everything's run by... It's, it's that kind of thing. There's a lot going on, a lot going on that you don't see when you use Task Parallel Library. Uh, and you're not supposed to care. And uh, if you do, well, then you investigate and you maybe uh, go ahead and try to tamper with it. And I need to get power in a bad way. Jim, Jim. I'm going to be dead. Um, so I got up this morning, I put on a nice shirt. I polished up my slides, I practiced the presentation, and I came to work and did a great job at work, and I forgot my power supply. Oh, and I stained, uh, stained and lacquered the stair rails on our staircase. Probably got too much lacquer in the, in the, on the brain. The stairs look wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Jim. No problem. Um, all right, so a few more words. Uh, one of the great things about, about the task uh, parallel library, and I, I could have brought this up earlier because we, this is true also of the thread pool manager in general, is that you, it decides, not you, how many threads to use to execute whatever it is you're doing. And it might not use any. That is, it might leave everything on your main thread of execution. And it might do that because it decides it doesn't need another thread. Or it might do that because it decides that there aren't any more threads, or not enough. Okay? And again, the logic it uses for deciding this is something you can tamper with, if you feel like it. Um, I would be horrified and terrified at the idea of doing that. Because uh, then, you know, is the next guy coming along running my code going to have any idea that any of that stuff is happening? So, the pro the benefit you get, though, is that if you have extra CPUs, extra extra cores, extra you know, threads, threads, or if you're just on a computer that isn't doing a whole lot besides running your code, then you can have lots of threads. Okay? And you don't have to ask for them. It'll just decide to give them to you. Then again, if you're in an environment where you don't have extra threads, it'll just, <coughs> rather than choking the computer, uh, or, or starving your code, it will just say, all right, you're going to run on one thread now. Another thing you don't control is when do we start, okay? As soon as you say, uh, use one of the different methods, including this one called start, um, start despite its name is not guaranteed to start anything at that moment. It's simply a request. I'd like to start now. Um, and if there's no impediment, it'll go ahead and start it after it does a lot of housekeeping and will do to set things up. Um, but if it thinks, again, things are too busy, uh, you know, the weather doesn't look good, uh, there's, there's a lot of turbulence in the air, it'll wait. And you have to be okay with that. You know, it's asynchronous. So one of the key things, and we've seen it already, is that in asynchronous programming, you launch these different functions on their own merry way, and they go and do their thing when they do their thing. You don't have any guarantees at all about how long it's going to take, uh, what order things are going to happen in, uh, who's going to finish first. Um, but that's okay if you can avoid blocking or if you can make better use of your hardware. Now, the key thing, and I, I didn't really make this point earlier, is that the, the main benefit to you as a programmer, aside from the fact that it handles a lot of functionality that's hard to do in other, in other uh, frameworks, is that you get to write code that looks very much like synchronous code, much more like synchronous code than uh, anything you've seen so far, especially when we get to these async and sync keywords. Okay. Um, all right, so let's go look at that. Okay, so we're back in C sharp, and we looked at the, this method here, and we looked at this one here. Okay, so our first example with Task Parallel Library is going to use <coughs> the .NET 4.0 <coughs> syntax. Okay, this is before the await, um, before the async and await keywords. This is what you can do today if you have Visual Studio 2010 and not 2012. Or, uh, also, if you 
create a new project in uh, Visual Studio 2012, and it's a C-sharp project or a VB project, it's going to choose the .NET 4.0 framework for you instead of 4.5. So if you want to run uh, 4.5 stuff, you've got to go in and change the properties of your project to make it a 4.5 project, which is uh, a little lesson I learned several times while I was doing this uh, presentation. So if you're uh, stuck or blessed to be in .NET 4.0 and not in 4.5, you can do this. Here's that same lambda we've, I've been using over and over in all these examples. No arguments coming in and uh, uh, returning the uh, get new status, which takes three seconds. All right, and this is not unlike the request I made to the thread pool manager a while ago, except I'm not giving it a call back. Um, he's not here. Um, I'm just saying task run. And remember when I said when I said run, um, that's not to be taken quite too literally. That means run when you're ready to run. You know, I'd like you to run, as opposed to you better run. Okay, and it's going to return a task. Okay, Let's see if I can bring it right. this is going to be hard to read. What it, what it will return is an object of class task. All right, so task is task is the class. Run is a static method on that class, and the result of executing the static method run is an object of type task. Now, specifically, this is a task that's parameterized, and I, well, so that you can see that, I'll just type it. So here's task, angle bracket, string. Okay. It is a task that contains a string in it, or it is a Think of it as a function return that has a string. All right. So the way we get things back with task parallel library is we get tasks returned to us, and these tasks have uh, whatever they're going to have as a generic as a generic parameter of the object. Okay. So this is not returning just an object, you know, type object. It's returning. It's specifically returning a string. If I change this to say int 32, it should complain. And look at that, red squiggle right away. Okay, so I get a strongly typed, a strong generically typed task object back from calling task.run. And now, now comes the ugly part. If I want to retrieve the actual value, the string that's inside that task, I have to do this. I have to say task and then call a method on it called continue with. And what do I pass into that? I pass a delegate into that. And it's kind of an ugly delegate. It's an action that's parameterized by a task. Okay? So it's an action that takes a task as an input. All right? And then here's the lambda to represent that. I'll break it down on another line for you. So the, um, I like the way C sharp is very lenient about indenting. Okay, so continue with takes a, a delegate argument, and the argu and, and that delegate in turn has to is, is going to be receiving a task uh, of type uh, parameterized by type string right here, and then it takes the result property of the task. Just like we saw in uh, in the uh, asynchronous callback, and passes that up into update status. Okay, so this isn't terribly more. This is this is not really that much more elegant than the syntax you would have had already if you just use either the asynchronous delegate or the asynchronous event. Okay, but it'll work. So let's make sure of that. At least I say it will. Let's. I ran out of good guys from Star Trek, so I started using villains. Um, didn't have as many cast members as they had subsequently, and I did not want to use next next generation characters. Just an impurity about it. Um, but let's try the next version. <coughs> 
So the next version is saying is going to be is going to do exactly the same thing as this. Okay, what it's going to do is going to be just about identically the same as this. Okay, now we're using the .NET 4.5 keywords, and this, this, by the way, since it's .NET 4.5, and since the numbering is never going to be consistent ever again, we're talking about C-sharp version 5. Okay, so in C-sharp version 5, and I believe it's VB version 5, running on .NET 4.5, you can do this. So, um, change one thing here. <clears throat> Uh, I'm using, instead of saying task run, I said factory start new. And I don't want to explain yet what the difference is, so let's just say run instead. In this instance, they're going to do exactly the same thing. And actually, I don't need the parameter here either. Okay, so, now, now it's, right, so now my first line looks just like it did in the dot, .NET 4.0 example. Okay. <coughs> Um, well, it looks almost the same, except that what it's returning now is not a task parameterized by type string, it's a string. Okay? So my first benefit here is that I, although I do have to wrap it around this task run business, okay, the only thing I need to do with run is just take what I take the, the code that I was going to run, the code I was going to execute, get new status, and I just put it inside a lambda that doesn't have to take any argument, and I give this to the task run method, and in return for my trouble, I get back a string. Okay. So now I'm ready to go ahead and party away with my string as if I hadn't done anything asynchronous up to this point. Okay. Now, the other thing that's new about this, so, so how does this happen? Well, we have two new keywords here, async, which belongs to the method signature, and await, which belongs to the call we're making to the, uh, the static method, of, well, to the, uh, to the task. Okay. Here's what's really happening to uh, make this a little more explicit, a little more, ver a little more verbose and therefore explicit, or maybe it's explicit and therefore verbose. Um, oops. What's really happening is I'm saying uh, task, here's that task.string type we just had. That's what task run give, gives me, just like we had before. Okay, so the code's the same now. Then we're going to say, like that. Oops, turn the signs. Okay, this is, this is equivalent. Same thing. Okay? To show you a little more clearly what this await word is actually doing. Okay? It's saying, it's basically compressing all of this, okay, into a single line of what looks like synchronous code. Now, as soon as, as soon as the, uh, um, as soon as the runtime enters this function, it's going to execute this function synchronously up to the point where it hits this keyword await. And as soon as the runtime sees that, it's going to say, I'm going to exit this code right now. I'm not going to run the rest of it until the asynchronous callback that is hidden inside this task uh, executes and returns the result. Okay, that point, I'm going to teleport. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get the away team back on the enterprise. We're going to, we're going to beam ourselves right back into this function, 
and resume on the next line of code, having now gotten our string back out of the task, and now we'll do something with the string. Okay? So that is what is happening <coughs> when we run this thing in the synchronous line. And we'll see if I managed to wreck the code when I did that. There we go. Okay. Now, to really see how slick this is, take a look at this version. Okay? One line of code. Accomplishing everything that we've already done. Okay? One line of code. And I'm just saying, task run. Now here, here I'm giving it uh, the whole update status sync. Okay, remember update status sync retrieves the new status and then assigns it all in one shot. Okay, no, nothing at all says I can't, uh, I can't wrap multiple things inside the body of code that I want my uh, task to execute. So here, um, you know, once you get used to noticing that the async keyword is here and that the wait, await keyword is here, then reading this is real simple. Okay? Real dirt simple. So let's run that last example and get out of here. Okay, any questions so far? Yeah? Are there advantages in performance here, or is it strictly in ease of reading and writing the code? Um, I would be very reluctant to say that there are any advantages in performance. I'd be reluctant for, for this, okay, for this kind of just non blocking uh, type thing. I, I, I wouldn't say there are any advantages over any of the other methods. It's mostly about uh, convenience of syntax, and then convenience of doing certain other things that you might want to do uh, in conjunction with uh, running code asynchronously. Okay, I promised that we would also look at F-sharp, so let's take a quick look at that. How many of you are dying to see this in F-sharp? How many of you know what F-sharp is? Just give your hands go. <coughs> Okay. F-sharp it's a functional programming language, or at least that's sort of a careless way of describing it. Um, in F sharp, functions are first class objects. In function in F sharp, you don't need delegates um, to create functions. Functions don't need to belong to a class in F sharp. Passing functions around as arguments to other functions is very easy.